Have you ever heard of a Moore clock? If not, you've come to the right place because we're going to talk all things Moore clock today. Hi, I'm Linda with Life on Summer Hill and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out. So let's get started talking about what a Moore clock is, the history behind it, and I'll share my story about how I got my Moore clock. I first discovered Moore clocks on Liz Marie Galvin's Instagram. That then led me to an antique store in England called White and Faded. After looking at more clocks for years, I found out that White and Faded shipped a container full of antiques to Liz Marie's store so that Americans could have some authentic European antiques like the Moore clocks. Now, I live in Florida and the Found Cottage, which is Liz Marie's shop, is in Michigan. So we hopped in the car and went on a adventure to pick up an antique Moore clock. So us Floridians are not used to snow. So this was a fun little surprise when we got there. On Saturday morning, we hopped in the car and we headed to the Found Cottage. After doing some shopping, with the help of some of the employees at the Found Cottage, we wrapped the clock put it in the back of my SUV, and we were ready to go. Before we start talking about the history of Mora clocks and how to decorate with them, I wanted to show you Lake Michigan. I felt like we were in the Arctic. I mean, look at this. It's where the waves come in and freeze, and they make these mounds. Now back to Florida, where we'll clean the clock, and then I'll show you how to decorate with a Mora clock. I came home with some spider webs <laughs> as a part of the uh, Mora clock. So there's some spider webs over here and over there. So I'm going to take the blower and blow that out. And then I also wanted to show you how it looks like the original paint color was this green here um, or this darker green because you can see the bare wood here. And there's even a green tinge down in here. So I think it was originally a green color. And this is white and faded's little tag they put on here. But the top layer of paint is just super brittle. I mean, it's basically popping off into pieces. Like here's a piece that came off while we were traveling. Now, while I'm unwrapping the clock and looking it over, let's talk about the history of Moore clocks. So, these clocks originated in a village called Moore in Sweden, uh, beginning around the time of the late 1700s through the mid 1800s. And basically, the people who lived there, there was a drought, and they had to find another means to take care of their families. So they picked up the skill and the art of making these clocks. And the cool thing about this was if I lived back then and I went wanted to buy a clock, I would basically go and pick out who I wanted to make the body of the clock. So one person would make the body of the clock and then the next person would make the clock itself and the face of the clock and then another person would be the artist who would paint it and do art on it. So it was really a neat um, way that they made these clocks and that's why no two more clocks look alike. Next, let's talk about how I cleaned my clock. The first thing I did was I used a blower to blow away any dust, um, any of the spider webs that were inside. I also used my horsehair drafting brush because the bristles are so fine. I used it to remove any additional spider webs or dust. Next, we brought the clock inside and we set it up next to my fireplace. The first thing I had to do was take the actual clock mechanism and place it on top of the clock body. Now, I grabbed the hood, I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but I grabbed the hood and I placed it over the face of the clock. So, so the hood now is sitting around the clock, closing it in. But I noticed that the actual face of the clock was not sitting right in there so I took it off and I worked on adjusting that face so I had to lift one side up a little bit with like a little piece of wood a thin piece of wood and then once I got that situated I put the hood back on and it sat in more snugly 
Next, we noticed that the clock was not standing straight up and down, so I grabbed a piece of wood and placed it behind it and then used my level to make sure it was straight. Okay, so our Mora clock is in our living room in between the fireplace and the window, but we have a little bit of room to the right that we need to add some decorations. So I went to my Etsy shop, I pulled a couple of printables from there and framed them and put them on the wall to balance it out. Now you might be wondering where to buy an antique Swedish Mora clock. If you live in America, I would look at Etsy and eBay or do a search on Google. There are more Mora clocks in Europe, but you would need to add a shipping option if you live in America, which can make it quite costly. Don't forget, a great place to shop in the UK for a Mora clock is white and faded. I got my clock from them through the collaboration with Liz Marie Galvin and The Found Cottage. As of February 2022, they had one more clock left, so if you see this soon, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Now, if you love the look of a Mora clock, but you want to pay a little less, I would look at reproductions. There are so many beautiful reproduction Mora clocks on the internet to purchase. Look at Amazon and Etsy options like long case clocks or wall Mora clocks. Um, Antique Farmhouse also has Mora clocks that are very pretty, and I'll put a link to that in the description. So what do you think? Are you ready to get a Mora clock for your home? They look beautiful in farmhouse style homes, cottage style homes, uh, cottage core, anything vintage. If you have that kind of style, you'll love having a Mora clock. They also look beautiful in old homes, as well as my suburban home that I have tried to make more vintage every time. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out. And we'll see you soon.